And welcome to The WAN Show, everyone. The show where we talk about stuff that's going on in tech as well as whatever tickles our fancy. And let me tell you, when it comes to tickling, things can get pretty fancy around here. We've got some great topics for you this week. Uh, Windows 9 is rumored to be getting a revamped DRM scheme that... A is kind of brutal and B kind of makes a lot more sense, but more on that later. Also, Windows 7 is going to be losing support a lot sooner than I think most people would like. The, uh, you know, just split support. Though. The just shy of 50% of people out there that are running Windows 7 right now. <laughs> Might not be thrilled about this, and then what else we got? Adblock Plus is getting sued, and not for necessarily what you'd think. Don't you dare tell them something else. A real topic. He was going to say potato salad. <laughs> that is a real topic. It's not funny. It's, it's stupid, and it exploits it's the system. I want to talk about what you just it said. It doesn't exploit the system. It exploits... Humanity? I don't know what it exploits. Humans desire to be a part of something larger? Is that exploitation, or is that just giving them what they what they need to be happy? Is giving people what they need exploitation? Why don't we just... just, but you're, just... you're getting something from them at the same Cue time. Cue the intro. We didn't even he do another topic. He said as if they had That's a producer. I, I didn't even say potato salad. I had to do nothing for that. He's... You introed the whole potato salad topic. Do, do, Direct. do, 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 <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Vitamin. <laughs> I forgot to take it at lunch today. Okay. Oh look, we're just sitting in front of a blank wall because I'm trying to put my headphones in. That's pretty cool. Uh, here, throw, throw one of our sponsors up there. So the show today is brought to you by DollarShaveClub.com. Shave time and shave money. Get high quality razors delivered directly to you. Also, Lynda.com. Get knowledge delivered directly, directly to, to you. you through the internet at your own pace dollar shave club <laughs> they ship stuff once a month lynda.com wow you can use it whenever it's the way to learn and you can look as educated and clever as her yay internet maybe hopefully a little bit cleverer she does look educated though Bye, she's Taryn. got like glasses don't chop the cable please push it down with your foot oh it will be fine he's very protective of his cables all right we've got a great show for you today guys uh, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like we're in the driver's seat of what's going on here. We've this got a great a chauffeur. Them seat. chauffeur. Oh, <laughs> not good. No one should put us in the driver's seat. <laughs> no, <laughs> especially if that driver is driving to a comedy club. To a comedy club. Because we would do really bad on stage. Did That's it? not even a pun. <laughs> <laughs> but get it. See, that's the point of the joke. No, yes, the is. point of a joke can never be that the joke isn't funny. But that was the whole, that's the whole thing. It's that we weren't funny, so we couldn't go to the comedy. My show. jokes are funny. I just, I just laugh about pretending that they're not. Because, um. I don't think your jokes are that funny. Some of them are funny. Thank you. I'm not sure. I think inherently puns can't actually be that funny. Oh, puns are a very high form of humor. This is why you're not funny. So anyway, um, why don't you pick the first topic? I like today. puns. I'm I'm firing up the old Twitch chat here so that I can like talk. I to already my fire the Twitch chat. The Twitch chat's on my side. You can't fire the Twitch chat. I, I love fired... the Twitch chat. Oh. I defended you guys. Now tell me, let's that straw wasn't... poll now. Who whose side are you on? Twitch chat. Linus is putting words in my mouth. Oh, it's not the only thing I'm gonna put in your mouth. Wow. <laughs> Speaking about putting things in people's mouths, Windows 9 revamped activation DRM. They're getting rid of CD keys, those like giant 16 character alphanumerical things that you used to have to use back in the old days before I, like Steam and stuff. I hate those things. <laughs> <laughs> They're stupid. Have, have you noticed how many, how few times you actually have to use them now? I had to enter one to install Star Citizen. I had to enter two because I had to install the game and then the uh, you expansion. You do it for Star Citizen? Uh, 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 Supreme Commander, sorry. Oh, Supreme yeah, Supreme yeah, Commander. Yeah. So yeah. I had to enter two, like, in a row. I'm just like, what? I, was like, I don't want to do this. I feel like the 90s. <laughs> I have these discs and these strings of and these numbers. And what? What uh, is this? 
<laughs> anyway, sorry, carry on. Tell them about the rumored DRM scheme. The rumored DRM scheme, so we're not even sure. But basically, what's going to happen is you're going to have to have a Microsoft Store account. That's not the same as your Microsoft account. So I can't continue to actually just use my Hotmail account that I've had since the dawn of time. Thanks for that. Anyway, yeah, carry on. a Microsoft Store account. Um, and the images are going to be served to you through the Microsoft Store. So it's going to be attached to your account, very similar to how all these like gaming platforms are doing their stuff now. Um, your machine's details, usually just your motherboard details, are going to be logged with Microsoft and the software is still activated on your machine. But if you're freaked out right now, just like I did when I first read that, it's not actually that big of a deal because if you go to install the OS on another machine, it'll just deactivate your old machine, re-log your new motherboard details, and you're good to go. So it's not actually... They, they thought about that, which is surprising and cool. Um... That's, that's honestly basically it. One of the big things they're going to be pushing for Windows 9, which we already knew, is that they're going to be trying to make it for people that really liked Windows 7. This is going to be their big push. They're bringing back the start menu. It's supposed to be an extremely functional start menu. Uh, they're going to be talking about it in fall with early public and semi-public pre-retail versions of the OS being released and circulated at that point in time. So especially if you're like going to school for something in, in the way of like something that's related to computer science at all you'll probably be getting versions of this really early. Or if you're in the industry at all, you'll probably be getting versions of this early. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. Windows is like one of the most pirated things. And I guess ever. like I, 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 I get that they need to not be pirated as much. And I can understand that. They have to do something. And as far as uh, DRM approaches go, I mean, as long as... I don't know, like I... I used to really hate the subscription model, but now that I'm on it for Adobe Creative Cloud, um, now that I'm on it for Office, why is this mic so quiet? Having some trouble here. Sorry, guys. Um, now that I'm on it for Office as well, um, I'm starting to kind of like it. And the thing that I don't like now is being stuck with a single license of a piece of software that's completely non-transferable. Now I find that actually a lot more offensive. That's it happen. Oh, you mean like Steam? I mean like the I, I mean the more traditional Windows approach, where particularly the OEM licenses, it's just it's like this. It's stuck. It, it, you had to buy it once, and then it's just. But this done. kind of solves that problem because yes. if you activate it on another machine, it just deactivates the other machine automatically yes. because it saves your, which is actually kind of interesting. Now with retail copies of Windows, that was always the case, but those were also very expensive. But then I like what they've done with Office, having things like three packs for families, for example, because my whole yep, issue... Yeah, but they've, they've talked, apparently the concept can be adapted for three to five user family packages. So like that. that makes more sense to me. Like the big problem for me with Windows is that it's very difficult for me to swallow the, you know, 500 to 600 to however many hundred dollars upgrade every however long. Like, I mean, they're releasing a new OS every couple of years now. So for me to absorb that every couple of years to keep my entire house up to date is absurd. To be completely honest, you can probably skip every second one because they're terrible. Well, okay. So, so let's like, say even every four years. You can ignore eight. You can ignore ten. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I hear you. So that's, that's, I guess, that's, I guess, what makes me both... Um, I, I, I do things a little bit differently, though. I, I usually allot an amount of money that I can spend on semi-frivolous things right. every, like, month. You consider Windows to be a frivolous thing? Well, because you I already have... You must have a really exciting life. Oh, yeah. It's but like, I already have... I, I'm kicking back this weekend. I'm gonna go buy some Windows licenses. You know what, though? If I did, I would probably spend that weekend just yeah, kind of tinkering I, with it. I'm a picking up a six-pack... <laughs> <laughs> go to my house we can have an install party that anyone who's been to an install party oh yeah Pro probably probably not that many people in the audience but those those were a thing at one point in time um, uh ncix did a windows 8 uh, launch party remember we yeah. covered that thing yeah we yeah, did. yeah that yeah. was weird but no like straight up install parties they used to be really popular for linux early in the day when it was really hard to figure out things and you'd have like developers and stuff come down and everyone would help each other install on all their machines and like create custom drivers if they're having issues and stuff like that install parties they used to be a thing install parties man all um, right. anyway what were we even talking about so i guess okay what's your right. thought yay or nay if it okay let's let's put up let's put out a hypothetical the way that it's implemented 
if, and then I'll let you and go if there's, yay or nay. if there's no issues and this is how it's implemented, yes. then okay. I actually kind of like So it. basically, it's your online account. I mean, I'd love for them to just do it through Steam. Yeah. If there's a way to do that. like <laughs> They won't, but Let's yeah. say it basically works exactly like Steam. So you log into your account, you download your ISO, and then you assign the license according to whatever, the serial number of your motherboard or whatever else. And then basically the way it works is you buy a license and then you can upgrade your license to like a three pack or a five pack or something like that. And you can manage all of your machines within this one account. If they do it really well, it's really streamlined and there's no bullshit with me switching between machines because my motherboard and whatever the frick that I was scared about at the beginning, which yes. apparently in this they've dealt with that. Yeah. If there's none of that, then I'm cool with it. Okay. Because honestly, Windows is pirated way too much. And if it is very streamlined and very easy for me, I'm okay with it. Okay. But it has to not be... Because the biggest problem right now is I, I honestly know people that pirate Windows only because it's extremely hard to maintain your Windows copy if you do a lot of PC upgrades. I mean, that's the reason that... I mean, a lot of people ask why on our test bench machines it, it always, always says, says this copy is not genuine in the bottom corner. It's not because they're pirated. In fact, if they were pirated, they wouldn't say that. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason <laughs> that most of the test bench machines say that is because as soon as you swap hardware, that message starts popping up. Unless it's like my GPU test bench, because it won't freak out when you change GPUs, and that test bench has been the same for a really long time. So like so, certain test benches won't say that, but if you see that, sometimes that's why. And sometimes it's like they'll look for, okay, you can swap the GPU as many times as you want, but as soon as you change the RAM and a GPU, now it's going to freak out. So or something. I, I, I don't think anyone quite knows exactly how the system works, but the point is that when it's a bench that we're swapping things in and out of all the time, they inevitably do that. And it doesn't affect any of the benchmark results anyway. So what are we going to do? Call them up every time? No. That's ridiculous. Sometimes, but just like, yeah. No. So if, if it actually worked really streamlined, like if every time I change something, it would just be like, oh, you have too many machines activated. And I could just be like, deactivate this one. And it was like, okay, perfect. Done. That would be sweet. So as much as this is somewhat good news, I still have to wonder if paid OS has a place in the modern world with Apple giving it away. Uh, Google giving it away. Well, if it becomes extremely difficult to actually pirate Windows, that could help Linux a lot. Yeah. All right, so Is we have the like... results from the straw poll. Oh, at least we would if my capture was working. That's going to be inconvenient today. I can't believe I didn't check this before we started streaming. That is extremely unfortunate. Get it? Extremely unfortunate. I'm just going to go check and make sure the... Uh, oh, she don't get that at, in, at all. Because every once in a while it comes out, and then that's bad. Why, why is extremely unfortunate uh, funny? When I don't have... Wait, what? Why? Stream? Because we're streaming? Oh. See, it's funny. It's a pun. You wouldn't understand, apparently. <laughs> all right. So um, I wanted to show them the results of that, but... You know what? But nope. I'm going to let you do the next topic, and I'm just going to go get the uh, Live Gamer Portable because right. it actually works, unlike these Black Magic cards. Do you want to hear about something that's probably going to suck? Uh, really? You think so? Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay, so this was originally posted on the forum by uh, Blood With Ice and Connect for Windows. I, I see it. I see it. I, I know. Connect for Windows V2 is finally coming. Now, I remember how laughable it was um, back when they were showing off Connect for, for PC and they were showing off some of the, you know, uh, medical applications, for example. Were you there at the Microsoft booth at Computex last I, year? I, I saw some stuff about it. I wasn't there, though. Okay, like it was, it was super cool. So the kind that you could just make, uh, you could make a 3D model of something just by putting it on a rotating platform in front of a Kinect. But obviously the, the resolution is just not good enough because it's a Kinect V1 and it's, and it's stupid. So the amount of disappoint that I had when Xbox One launched and Microsoft was like, no Kinect on PC, don't worry about it. Yay. Because I like the, to me, that was the only good thing that could possibly come out of Kinect <laughs> V2 was putting it on the PC and it letting developers... It should have just developers... been a USB cable and it should have just worked. Yes, it should have. There is no reason why Kinect nope. shouldn't just connect with a USB cable. Not at all. There's a lot of things like that, actually. Yeah. But, <laughs> but okay, so it's going anyway. to be 200 bucks most likely. Full um, 1080p. Released July 15th. Uh, the problem that I see with it is that it's not shipping with um, its Windows SDK 2. 
and they have no price for that right now. So if it's not coming with that bundled in, you're not going to see massive adoption for it, and I don't see a lot of really big games building in support for Connect. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really... I, it doesn't make a ton of sense, in my opinion. I can see some people doing it. The 200 bucks isn't too bad, but something to think about is that the Leap Motion, which has way more support right now and is cheaper, also exists, and not all that many people are kind of jumping all over the Leap Motion. And the Connect 1, when it worked on PC, didn't exactly get a huge amount of adoption. Most of the stuff you're seeing with Connect 1 was hacker type people making their own little applications that they didn't even necessarily share. And then that was almost it. So I don't know. I don't know if the adoption for this is going to be super huge. We see tons of stuff coming out right now, which is going to take a lot of custom work to work into people's games and stuff. And I, I don't see people being able to cater to all of them. There's there's that Toby thing that SteelSeries is working on for eye tracking. There's Oculus. There's Control VR. There's Connect. There's Leap Motion. There's so many different things. And it's way too saturated. And as a game developer sitting down, are you actually going to pick Connect as one of the things that you're going to really work on? I guess for me, the thing is that I don't even really see it as as necessarily a gaming play. I, so I think much. it's interesting in in much more interesting in things outside of gaming. Yeah. To be honest, I see it much more interesting in terms of uh, like what you're talking about, 3D scanning. Yeah. 3D, 3D like, printers are a huge deal. 3D scanning and 3D printing with something higher res than Connect One. That's like. I think that could be really cool. Freaking cool. I, I don't see this being a huge thing in terms of gaming. That's why I was. Yeah, and I mean things bit. like I mean for even if the software development kit is somewhat expensive. Um, if you can, with $200 hardware, if all of a sudden you can do really great uh, motion capture, for example, that's, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing that, again, I don't expect this to make a huge difference to you know, the average Joe immediately, but I still, I'm glad they're finally doing it. I wish they would have done it right away. And that's sort of what I have to say about that. So I whose side surprised. are you on? Potato salad is the big winner. Didn't we agree with each other on this? On what? On this? No, I didn't agree that they should be on your side and potato salad above me. Why would I agree on that? But no, weren't we on the same side? About what? This wasn't this the Microsoft? No, I just asked them whose side they were on but was, in general. Was, no, it was the, nothing to do with Microsoft. It was just in general. So basically, direct. in the popularity contest of me versus you, direct. potato salad is more popular than either but of us. But I wanted to bring up the potato salad topic, so that just gets added to my score. Uh, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> that is how it works. Do you even know anything about math? <laughs> All right, so Adblock Plus. Oh, my God. Oh, Adblock is being sued by some Germans or something. The point is they're being sued. The original poster on the forum was Victorious Secret, and the original source is over at neowin.net. So we're going to go ahead and there's the original article. So we all know what Adblock does. Adblock lets you block those pesky ads. Oh my god, it's in the name. Heaven forbid a content creator actually get paid for doing the work that they do. I was talking to people today about how five gallon buckets makes more money than line of tech tips. Yeah. That kind of blew their brain. 5 yeah. buckets.com more profitable than line sectors. <laughs> anyway, the point is that that's how content creators get paid, and blocking ads is basically a scummy thing to do in the first place. So, should it surprise us that this company that exists for the so that that sole product is all about avoiding other ha having other, having people avoid having someone else get paid? Um, turns out that they're just potentially, allegedly kind of scummy. So the word <laughs> on the street right now, and the reason that they're being sued is not necessarily just because some company is butthurt that they're not getting paid because Adblock is allowing users to circumvent their ads. No, what they're actually being accused of is that is having an illegal business model. So it was recently reported that Google has been paying money in order to allow its ads to pass through Adblock Plus. So that is that is some dirty, dirty is stuff so going dirty. on. That is that is that is super gross. People are like, yeah, that block isn't illegal as far as I know. You know, it's not. No, nope. it's not. But, but what? But what is like some scary mafia bullshit tactics? Is protection money, man? Letting letting Google pay through. And that is basically what we're talking about. That we're talking ad block 
turning their business model, if this is true, into basically a way of double dipping, charging ad creators double in order to get people to actually see the ads. I mean, wow. It's kind of awesome, but awesome wow. in a terrible way. Like, horrible. And I can't wait till this becomes, if, if, if the German guys don't win, if this becomes a much bigger thing, you yeah. can just go to Adblock's site and be like, yeah, I want you to unblock this whole website. Like, if we could, like, pay to get Linus Tech Tips <laughs> unblocked, that would be hilarious. Because that would become really widespread, and then Adblock would be useless, the problem, and then people though, would just is, stop using it anyway. You know what? It's it, A lot of the time, it's the, you know, internet liberation, whatever, blah, 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 the internet should be free. Everything guys should be free. That are, that, are, that are trumpeting the merits of Adblock, and then you look at what Adblock's doing, and this is no less dirty than trying to circumvent something like net neutrality. It is equally dirty. Creating tiered delivery systems on the internet is wrong. Period. So, guys... then you're going to have to be able to afford to make money on the internet. You're going to have to be able to afford to pay the content creator to, to advertise, and you're going to have to afford to pay the Adblock Mafia to allow your ad through. Someone just said and, in the Twitch chat, Adblock is great. I'd never internet again without it. And I as seriously an, don't. Yeah, I doubt it. And <laughs> as an Adblock user, you should hold them accountable for this in some way. So if you guys are going to go and be crusaders about whatever it is you be crusaders about, this is one of them. you got to also attack Adblock for what they're doing. I'm not even, I'm not even saying right now. Do, do I personally want people to use Adblock? No. I'm a content creator. My survival is... Uh, ads so i like people to watch ads it's good i appreciate when they watch and listen to our sponsors and all that but am i telling you guys right now go and uninstall your ad block because they're bad people no i'm saying do something because this voice your opinion like is you a bad people thing to do at least let them know that you that that's not okay and you're not gonna like if you if you attack ad block for this they're not gonna shut down and it's it's one thing if ad block is completely blocking ads and it's another thing if they're not these are both legal but the accusation right now is that allowing the ones that they get paid to allow is not legal because that's not what the end user signed up for. That's certainly not what the ad server or the content creator had in mind. They're basically just playing around with it on, in their own little sandbox over there. Speaking of sandboxes, potato salad. Kickstarter. We're flying this through topics today. really is just the ultimate playground right now, isn't so it? There's... One thing I got to drop first is that we're at about $47,000 now. We were at $70,000 before, so a lot of people have pulled back. I shouldn't say we, because it wasn't us. This yeah, was not no, our neither, idea. Neither of us. Nope. So everyone's pretty much heard about it at this point. It's some guy posted on Kickstarter. He's making potato salad. The perks are just... Stuff like getting better mayonnaise from the natural food section, uh, calling a chef to get a better recipe, it just stuff like that. And uh, it's, I, I don't even know what else I have to say about it. It's super stupid. There's a whole bunch of different stretch goals too, like he was just talking about, like at $3,000, which he's massively passed and he's not putting any more stretch goals. Who's being exploited here? Because I feel like someone must be. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if people voluntarily give their money because they think it's funny, I mean... Uh, uh, it, My favorite thing, too, is, like, the hat and the t-shirt, which they're like, yeah, you get a hat or a t-shirt, but there's no graphics of, so you have no idea what it's going to be. Yeah, you can it literally just, just potato put, like, salad-themed hat. Helvetica letters that say potato salad. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know what? If I was a backer of this, that would probably be what I would want. It would be whatever goofy thing that the internet thinks is funny, and and that would be it. I mean, so potato I guess, salad with like a cat wrapped around in the bowl and rainbows. You know, I I, I don't know. And an EA logo on the back. I want to make a comparison to gambling here, because gambling. But you know, when you talk to gamblers, like there's the addicts. And then there's the people who gamble for fun. And they'll tell you, look, it's not about winning. It's about, I paid $200 and I had $200 worth of entertainment. And so if it. they win, then great. And if they lose, then they paid for entertainment and that's what it is. So is this, is it wrong and is it stupid if people are genuinely $10 worth of entertainmented by giving $10 to this 
And did they get their money's worth then? Some of the stuff I really like is, and like I'm going to tie into what you just said in a moment, but some of the stuff I really just like is the, the $3 tier where you get a bite of potato salad. He sold that to a thousand people. He's got to make a lot of potato salad. Yeah, a thousand so, bites of potato salad. But I guess that does kind of tie in. So if you if you donated three dollars, is it worth it so that one day you'll get potato salad in the mail, and you can Instagram it or tweet it to your friends or post it on Facebook or whatever and be like, "LOL, look, I just got potato salad in the mail because this Kickstarter thing that I backed." Is that worth the three dollars? Maybe. I mean, it's Not funny me, because but... we we have such different standards for different entertainment media, and in terms of how much we're willing to pay. Like, for some reason, we're okay paying, you know, by, I mean, by the time you take a lady friend with you, buy a popcorn, buy a drink, like you know, 60 it's bucks? 20, well, I was going to say like 25, 30 bucks. I don't know what kind of popcorn you're buying, but. Dude, two popcorns and two drinks is like $25. What, you bought her popcorn? And you didn't bring your own drink? I thought you were gonna what say are you and you stupid? I thought you were gonna say and you didn't bring me. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Where you bought her popcorn. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't buy. You didn't buy popcorn for me. <laughs> Maybe that was where I was going with it next. Actually, me. I always make sure that we eat before we go because I'm never buying that stupid crap. It's way too expensive. Okay, well, let's say you only buy tickets. Let's say you're a complete cheapskate like the two men in this room. <laughs> And you still paid like 25 bucks to go and be entertained yeah. for an hour and a half. And then you get people upset over a playtime of six hours for a AAA game that they paid $60 for. It's like, well, hold on a second. And I'm not saying Even you're... some people are upset when it's like 10, 15 hours. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I, was, mm. I was pretty upset about uh, episode five of Wolf Among Us. I was like, yeah, that was an hour of playtime. And like a third of it, spoiler alert, and, like, a third of it is stupid fight scenes that aren't even as good as the ones in the previous games in this, like, weird chase. And then the rest of it is the most predictable dialogue crap ever. I was so disappointed. Like, episodes one and two, awesome. And then it's like, they got the Game of Thrones franchise, and they're like, okay, we need to, like, pinch out this Wolf Among Us thing as fast as we can so that we can... Make all the money making it's Game of Thrones exactly games, it too. which is probably I'm not not accusing anyone of anything, but there you go. Anyway, so well, the, another thing I want to bring up is what are we even talking about anymore? Potato salad. But another thing I right. want to bring up is that the amount of tears where he has to say thank you during making the potato salad, he has to say thank you to like four thousand something people. <laughs> like the first tier, you get it for a dollar, so seventeen hundred and forty five people back that. The second tier, you get it one thousand fifty eight people back that. The third tier, you get it. 1,020 people back that. I think it's probably going to go through the whole thing. Do so... you think he's bitten off more than he can chew? Uh -huh. Do you bite off a piece of potato salad? You'd have to make like a potato salad bar. You could... <laughs> You know what's funny? Fancy restaurants, man. I swear. The less prepared the food is, the more expensive the it is. The less prepared like... and the more stacked. Think about it. The less fancy the restaurant is, the more flat your plate is. It, when you go to a fancy restaurant, they just put everything in a pile. Here. Like, these are, these are, these are basically just the stupidest See? thing ever. It's I went a to a restaurant once, and, like, it was someone else's treat. I never eat at places like this. And uh, I was just like, how do I eat this? This is called a wedge salad. I was like, what the hell is this? That's so stupid. Basically, they just quarter a thing of iceberg lettuce. It's not even expensive lettuce. Iceberg lettuce. Like, they're like, what, 60 cents a head. And then they put, like, bacon and stuff on it. And it's like, yeah, we prepared this. And the, the guy's like, oh, yeah, you use a fork and a knife. I'm like, what? So I, and it was like $25 for the salad or something like that. And I'm like, so what? I pay more and they prepare it less. So in my but mind, if he made the fanciest potato salad ever, it would actually be whole potatoes. <laughs> a, a, a potato that you like <laughs> mashed an egg into. Yeah. <laughs> it it's should, like, you and should it's be drizzled like, over the top. How to? It's like how to basic potato salad edition. Just like put a whole bunch of potato, throw a whole bunch of potatoes into a bowl, and then take a whole thing of eggs and just throw it into the bowl, and then be like, there. Here's your freaking potato salad. Green onions are extra. How to basic the restaurant <laughs> would be a scary place to eat. But there's so many people that would go to it. I know, right? 
<laughs> I'd almost want to go. I, uh, I did I tell you there. about my restaurant concept that I had a little while ago? No. Okay, I had an idea that I actually think is amazing. So, um, theme, kind of themed fun restaurants are a bit of a thing. Sorry, I'm going to interject here. real quick. He quite literally has to say thank you to all 5,808 people. Excellent. Every single tier has that included. Keep and going. given how many people have names that are impossible to pronounce, that's going to be a challenge. It is. Anyway, there's, uh, there's one called, what is it called, Dark Table? Yes. Dark Table, where the, the, the entire restaurant is completely blacked out. The unfortunate thing about Dark Table in Vancouver is that the entry door doesn't have like a spacing at the beginning, like a, oh, like so a spaceship open up the door. would. Oh, so okay. when you open up the door, you get light, right. and the bathroom is the same way. And dark tables in other cities, there's usually some, torp, some type of like dark room in between the sure. dining area and a dark room in between the bathroom. Okay, so anyway, so dark table, it's completely blacked out inside, and it's supposed to be kind of like having the experience of being blind. All the waiters and waitresses are blind, the cooks are not. Okay, so so like dark table is kind of cool, and I was like, okay, so if people are into this whole like interesting dining experience thing, I was I was thinking of having uh, there should be a restaurant where all the food is incredibly awkward and difficult to eat. So I thought that as, should be hilarious. It would be the ultimate icebreaker yeah. first date yeah. or like double date place to go. So you could have you could have dishes like single noodle spaghetti. <laughs> where the entire thing is one noodle and you don't give them a spoon or a knife. So basically, you just have to like... <laughs> like, the, the, like the chop it off with your teeth thing? Yeah, so the idea is just that if everyone looks like an idiot, then no one has to worry about, oh, I spilled a little bit or I have something dripping down my elbows. Like, like you could have sandwiches with just like basically, you know disgusting amounts of of sauce intentionally on one side of oh, it like yeah. from this so side so it will go out and then yeah. it will so it'll just drip down your elbows just stuff like that where you want things to still be delicious but they would be intentionally socially awkward to eat and like the rules would be whatever utensils we bring you that's all you can use to eat it they don't. only they only give you uh like no utensils at all so they don't give you any and it's sushi that's way too big to fit in your mouth yeah, like stuff like that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you'd have to like destroy it or mash it in your mouth. Yes. <laughs> See that kind of thing. I think that would be a lot of fun. That would actually probably be a lot. Someone of fun. needs to. Someone needs to have that restaurant. <laughs> Maybe this potato salad guy should start that restaurant yeah, with his right? like forty-seven thousand dollars. That's not even. Uh, yeah, I guess that's a lot of money. Not enough to start a restaurant. That's what I meant. I meant that in the context of not enough to start a restaurant. Not like. I am so I am so loaded that forty thousand dollars is not a lot of money. To it me. is going to be interesting though because with that forty seven thousand dollars, he has to he has to make a recipe book for potato salad. He has to ship yeah, out I thousands that. and thousands of bites of potato salad, like a lot of them. Um, he has to all the t shirts, make all that the hats. video, all the t shirts, all the hats. I think there might even be more stuff. There's a lot of shipping that's going to be in here. He's shipping out thousands and thousands of things, so he's probably not going to be able to do it by himself. He's probably going to have to get people to help him. Like, He's going to come out with a ton of money. Probably, maybe not even that much. But it's not going to be $47,000. Hmm. I could easily see him spending at least twenty grand doing all this stuff. I don't know. I just don't see the appeal. <laughs> see, I think it's funny, <laughs> but I don't think it's technically funny. I don't know. <laughs> There's no such thing as technically funny. Humor is not technical. But you can have a terrible sense of humor. Um, okay, so speaking <laughs> of not a lot of money, uh, Samsung's factory was robbed at not gunpoint. Thirty-six million in smartphones, tablets, and laptops stolen. So it was a group of about twenty armed men. Uh, this happened earlier this week. Um, the speculation right now is that there was probably someone on the inside involved in pulling off this heist. But basically, they had some of the employees subdued at gunpoint. They had others just kind of going about their days working, not That's even aware of what was going on. My favorite part. While some employees were held hostage during the site, the report claims that the majority of others just continued working. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're like, I can't run away. Because they'll shoot me. And if I stop working, who knows? My job could be in jeopardy. <laughs> so I just might as well keep on working. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would, I, I, you know, the funny, like, I, I don't mean for this to come across the wrong way, but I just don't get it. 
What would you even do with that many smartphones? How would you even unload that many smartphones without getting caught? If you know people that own stores or whatever. Right, but I mean, we're talking smartphones. We're talking things with, with digital serial numbers that are going to be reported to a carrier at some point. Like these are things that are pretty difficult pretty to trackable. to cover up. They're very trackable. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where I don't know. You guys ever watch numbers? You know, you go and you on a map. You kind of go, okay, well here's where they're being activated. Do, 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 do. They're probably coming from somewhere in here. Like this is this is legitimately a way that you could track yeah, something yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. So unless they have an extremely diverse distribution network, all full of people who aren't going to breathe a word, how do you not get caught doing something like this? Move, I guess. Like you might be able to find the store, but then maybe the store doesn't know. Maybe you go to a distributor. But the issue is that someone knows. Someone knows. And I don't know what the laws are like in Brazil, but here, selling stolen goods, even if, oh, I didn't know, is still illegal and yeah. still a big deal. Yeah. So. I don't know. I have no idea what the laws are like in Brazil, but I can't imagine this would be the hardest thing to track. Especially if they sold that much money worth of stuff. They must have been in there for so long. Oh, yeah. They were loading trucks and trucks and trucks. Yeah, yeah, and... exactly. So yeah. the amount of chance that you left some type of dna evidence behind the amount of chance that some camera got you at some point in time well the good news is they didn't kill or hurt anyone because if they yeah. had then it becomes i mean it's still whatever it's is bigger, bigger than grand theft but all of a sudden it becomes it becomes murder yeah um yeah i don't geez i don't know people are saying there's a lot of gold in smartphones i really think that there are there are better ways to get that much gold with 20 armed people than breaking into a smartphone factory that and is taking them apart. probably not what they're going for. I, mean, I, I, gave, I give you guys props. Like, thank you for the good idea, but I really don't think that's it. Yeah. Like, if I was going to coordinate a heist like this and I wanted gold, I would probably rob a jewelry distribution hub, not an electronics one. And those exist. Just throwing that out there. Probably hard to find. Probably harder to find than, like, Samsung's distribution hub. But if you are bringing along 20 people armed with truck drivers and everything, I don't know. You could probably find it. You could probably figure it out. Yeah. All right. So speaking of smartphones, <coughs> the original poster for this on the forum was Adam Isaac Lang. And the original article is from VentureBeat, and it's all about a vast recovering data off of cell phones that they bought on eBay. This is something that I guess we should have seen coming, um, but I had expected to be a little bit more difficult and a little bit less effective yeah. than it turns out that it was. Because the thing about flash-based storage is that unlike magnetic-based storage, it's actually reshuffling itself in the background quite a bit. So magnetic-based storage, the way that file recovery works is when you delete something, it only deletes the references to where the files are. It doesn't actually delete the entire file because that's very time-consuming and magnetic storage is slow. With an SSD, particularly a trim-enabled one, it actually does a bit more of a thorough job. It does. It's going to have to delete the references, the pointers, to where the files are, but then between sort of cleaning up the drive in order to optimize it for better performance and in both in terms of trim and in terms of idle garbage collection, um, a lot of data should in theory be lost and scrambled around because unlike a hard drive where you're going to write a file as continuously as possible with an SSD, things get scattered around all over the place. So even though you might only actually delete let's say 5% of a file as you are reshuffling things around, there's still a good chance that you would corrupt, especially certain file types that aren't as resilient to, uh, to, to partial losses of their data. So I didn't expect this to work as well as it did, but according to the report from Avast, um, they were able to get 40,000 photos, 750 emails, 250 names and addresses, and one loan application. <laughs> Why do you have your loan application on your phone? <laughs> Don't do that. But in, in general, I mean, part of the, the whole thing there is they're like, okay, look, you should probably use our software and do a proper secure wipe where you're actually overwriting things. So it's, it's a bit of a publicity stunt more yeah. than anything else. But the Smart. fact that um, 
I, I what was it? I forget what the numbers were. It's not it's not in our notes, but only a very small fraction of the phones had any security software oh, yeah. previously installed on them whatsoever. So a vast point, and their app is free, so it's not like they're actually trying to sell you something for five bucks or whatever. A vast point is, yo guys, please be aware of this. Your phone is like the least secure thing ever. Uh, oh, apparently it was to boost sales of its SecureWipe antivirus program for $30 a year. Uh, okay, when I was reading the article earlier, I, th I think they have one security app that is free. Okay. So there you go. Anyway, there are free apps, though, that can do a proper secure erase of your phone. So just something to be aware of, even if you don't want to give Avast your money for it. Okay little bit confused there my bad the security prices packages range with the most costing ah. about $30 while Avast is free thank you Avast is free I knew it all right Oops. so uh, here here was kind of a scandal this week this was interesting so the FTC is oh, yeah. uh, suing T-Mobile or finding them or whatever it is they're doing to them. Basically, they want money from them for knowingly adding bogus charges to the bills of their customers. Uh, this was originally posted on the forum by Ryu Kun, and there have actually been so quite a few updates His to this. His post was really good, by the way. As it's gone, as it's gone along here, it's so pretty much T-Mobile fired back almost immediately, saying, you know, hey, well, look, we uh, don't engage in this. It was an industry problem. Um, we don't understand why we're being gone after because we're about the most consumer friendly mobile carrier ever. Um, uh, their CEO called the claims unfounded and without merit. And uh, we believe that customers should pay only for what they want and what they sign up for. And, uh, yeah, so FT the FTC says that the services that they were charging for in question had refund request rates of up to 40% in a single month, and uh, T-Mobile is allegedly collecting as much as 40% of the revenue generated from these services. So services I'll be interested being, to see how this play plays out. Services being like blurting tips and horoscope and celebrity crap and stupid things like that, which no one should ever... Yeah. So, so basically, it's it, these are premium SMS services that they are that they are commonly charging for. So I didn't even know those still existed. I didn't know that either. In fact, I don't even know why I still get SMS messages from my carrier with the new legislation in Canada that forbids spam. Even mailing lists that I'm signed up for have told me they can't continue to email me unless I specifically authorize them to do it. Uh, is is SMS not covered by this? I actually it haven't looked into be. it that That's deeply. That's more annoying than email. Because I got a uh, I got an upgrade to the Galaxy S4 Mini for only this much text the other day, and it carries something like a ten million dollar fine, or one million or get ten million or something. Stupid annoying Telus text messages. Yeah, well, the the issue is that I'm close to the end of my contract, so my contract is ended. So they just spam me constantly. It's like wow. I'm at a time in my in my in my cycle here when I can leave you at any time. Seems like a good opportunity to piss me off, doesn't it? Yeah. It's what goes through carriers' heads. But you know what the scary thing is? Is if it didn't work, they wouldn't do it. Yep. I'm sure it works. Because you're not even I know a lot of people that don't even realize their contract actually ends. They're like, "Oh, I can get this phone for this much." Sure. They go in and get that phone and they're contracted again. Well, there you go. If you don't even really think about when your period ends, if you don't really think about all those other things. That did not come out right. I'm in your contract period. Oh, no. Okay. Anyways. I guess that's a thing. I still haven't picked who I'm going to go with. In terms of carriers. Can we move on now? Nanopixels. So this was originally posted on the forum by DLF, and the original article is on Extreme Tech. So we're talking resolutions 150 times higher. Nanopixels. So uh, blah, 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 etc. etc. et Researchers in England created nanopixels that measure just 300 by 300 nanometers. So comparing this to a modern smartphone with a 400 pixel per inch display, we're talking, yes, 150 times more. Now, 
Obviously, uh, we could create extremely high resolution displays with this technology, but there, um, there are some other complications. So for example, we'd have to figure out, you know, what kind of a display interface is going to be able to handle, uh, you know, 1,000 uh, or 198,000 by 1,200 or by 120,000 pixels. Is that the pixels. resolution that it does or can you do much lower? It can just do up to that because I'm pretty sure it can just do up to that. Yeah, it, no, it would be it would be up to that depending so on. So you don't like, have to push it that hard. No, I think they're just they're taking like probably a five inch phone screen size and going well. If we can do 1920 by 1200, then we could do this. With this potential density, yeah. we can do this. Yeah, because I don't I don't actually see anyone really actually pushing that resolution because it's ridiculous. So so we'd have to figure out how to even drive resolutions like that <laughs> yeah. with the we'd have to catch up in terms of processing power we'd have to catch up in terms of display interfaces i mean maybe light based interfaces could take us you know the next step forward but i guess my whole thing here is for most stuff it's probably a moot point yep for tvs irrelevant for computers irrelevant and even for smartphones i would say irrelevant i i have a really hard time telling the difference between the 2560 by 1440 display on the g3 versus the 1080p display on the 1m8 it's one thing I was, just not that different one thing i was thinking about is sometimes it becomes actually more expensive to manufacture older technology so if just everything starts moving towards this maybe it becomes cheaper and they're not even aiming for that resolution. They just aim for a way lower resolution, but just use this technology. And so maybe it comes to TVs. They don't need it, but maybe it just... I mean, if the, if the tech gets used for other things, like if it gets used for uh, better passive 3D, if it gets used for things like adding pixels with more colors, mm -hmm. so that we can... Like, you look at... Ah, um, oh shoot. Who is it who does the, the fourth yellow pixel in their TVs? Is it Sharp? I think so. I think it's sharp. Anyway, you 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 look at you look at stuff like that and and what that kind of tech can do to push things forward. I can see it being used there, but in larger larger form factor devices, I don't think it's that relevant. The place that I really see this being used though is um, head mounted displays, yeah. wearables, and yeah. then things like micro projectors. So hmm. we've seen some interesting stuff done with holograms. So what's that? What is it like, Miku? Or what's that? What's that Japanese uh, pop star character with the green hair? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know the name, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, anyway, uh, you know, I feel like, I feel like we should probably. They've also the right done name. hologram for Tupac, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Miku singer, Miku virtual, virtual singer. Here we go. Uh, Hatsune Miku. There we go. The world's virtual diva. Anyway, the point is they've done concerts with her as a, as a hologram, much like they did that thing with Tupac. Mm -hmm. And I would see very, very tiny displays like this as an interesting way to yeah, that push sense. that technology forward. So if you wanted something like a wrist-mounted holographic projector thing, we'd be talking extremely small uh, we'd be talking extremely small optics, and we'd be looking for ways to miniaturize things as much as we possibly could. So that's where that's where I'm really excited to see this technology going. But I see a lot of the comments on this article that are like, "Oh, we could have a 4K smartwatch." I'm just like, "Yeah, we don't need that." Who gives a crap at all? <laughs> uh... I mean, if they could, if they can make them transparent, and we could have really neat stackable displays. Yes. So that we had like I've a transparent that. watch. That yeah. had display elements at every level and could, like just I, I don't know. There's there's or have like the thing I was talking about with the real watch. Yes. With the digital watch screen on top, which can fade so you can see the real watch under it. So I know a lot of people that are just like, I want a mechanical watch because I like mechanical watches. And I'm like, yeah, well, there's other things that could be helpful. So maybe if the screen illuminates when you get a notification, and then when there's no notifications, it fades away and you have your nice mechanical watch, that could be pretty cool. I got my wife going on the pebble. Did you? Yeah. How does she like it? Uh, she she really likes it, and she's um so so a couple things. Number one is at her work they can't carry their phones with them. Um, she's in a pharmacy. It's unprofessional. So, what? It's kind of cheating. What? Having your pebble Whatever. if you can't carry your phone with you at work. It's just a watch, man. <laughs> so the point is, she can leave her phone in her bag, and she's not breaking any rules. But if something urgent comes through. Then like know, I'm but... like, where's the where's the child? I need to go retrieve him, and I don't know where to go because that these kinds of things happen. Mm. I don't have to call. I don't have to call and interrupt the entire pharmacy. I can just text and then 
she can go slip off discreetly when she or whatever has else. a moment or whatever. Right? And then the other time it's going to be really useful is she's going on maternity leave. Um, actually, starting today, she's on uh, short-term disability because of she's got like the these shooting pains and she can't stand all day. So she's on short-term disability until her maternity leave starts. And a lot of the time when you're taking care of a baby, so once she's on her mat leave, um, you're just kind of all over the place. Dealing with the baby, you're not necessarily keeping track of your phone. So she has a watch on her. You strap something to yourself. It's way to... <laughs> then it's, uh, it's easier for me to get in touch with her because I had a really hard time getting in touch with her last time she was on maternity leave. For those of you who don't know, uh, my baby's due uh, in about three weeks. So that's, that's what's up as far as all that is concerned. Someone said, I'm going to break this laptop. I have no idea what they're talking about. And another person said that once the 4K watch shows up, you're going to be super excited, and I think you're wrong. <laughs> you're totally wrong. How many cares did I give about the G3? And it's high-resolution screen. Go ahead, watch the review. That's how many cares I will give about the 4K watch. Boom. I've had a few more people watch my 792 thing. Oh, yeah? Everyone likes it so far. Speaking of which, you know what? Let's 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 go let's go hate on Microsoft for a little sure. bit here. So let's start with <laughs> Microsoft pulling Windows 7 support in six months. This was originally posted by Dietrich W on the forum, and the article here is from Business Insider. It's and, not. It's. Uh, yeah. Well. Okay. It's not really pulling support. I still That's call. Not fair. I still call bullshit on this because we're not going to get DirectX 12. No. Which is bullshit. Yes. So, I'm not disagreeing with you on that point at all. Okay. It's just not... So we're on the same page. Yes. You just you can't properly say that they're pulling support, because they're not. Not supporting DirectX 12 is bullshit. Especially if they're out of one side of their mouth, they're going to say, yeah, we care about the PC as a gaming PC gamers platform. And all that, yeah. We do this, except we're going to... like, it, it, Okay. It's been shown time and time again, the way to support gaming is to have a large platform of installed users for a game developer to target that is how you support gaming you do not support gaming by forcing people to buy a new os on hardware that would otherwise be fully capable of it in order to take advantage of a new feature that is how you get absolutely no one to give a shit about your new feature that's what you achieve by doing that <laughs> So that's why I'm mad about this from a gaming perspective. But anyway, they are continuing to provide security updates until 2020. January 14, 2020 or something like that. So yay for business. Also, business customers who pay for extended support can continue to get general updates, which to me is like, I get it. I understand why the business model works that way, but I'm still upset that you're developing all this stuff. And, and then you're just not giving it to us. Not giving it to us. I wouldn't us. be surprised at all if someone creates some sort of module where you can get those updates. I don't know. Anyway. Not that that would even be legal or right or anything. I'm just saying it might exist. Uh, I think timing for different things is fairly interesting because we just read something about Windows 9, which is where they said first half of 2015, probably not as soon as January 13th. Yeah. So they're going to drop performance support for it and let you squirm for a little while and then release Windows 9. <laughs> I oh. bet you that's what's going to happen because they're trying to be like, yeah, we're trying to capture Windows 7 users. So they're trying to chop you off and then give you an alternative that you actually like instead of Windows 8, which is trash. So, so there's that. Well, let's not be fair. Let's not call it trash. Let's call it... Refined garbage? Not... Well, that's... <laughs> That's not better. <laughs> Compact waste. It's not waste. I mean, there are good things about it. You know there are good things File about transfer. it. File transfer. And the, the task, task manager, manager. The task manager is much Nothing better. else. There must be something else. It's good at performing. It performs well. I hate that arrow's gone. Yeah. I hate that flat. I think it's ugly. I think it's really Windows ugly. 7 is beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, even the start button is like, dude, why is the whole thing white? Yeah. Because it's not really a start button. That's why the whole thing's white. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Okay. I, I'd like to say that we're gonna go easy on Microsoft for a little bit here. It's funny. I got called like the ultimate Microsoft fanboy by someone on like my Surface Three review, and I was like, "Really? Your Surface Three? Yeah, I know, right? What? <laughs> it's like people can decide that I've sold out no matter what I say. <laughs> Didn't you rip it apart? I could be. I could be like." You know what's garbage? Minecraft. And people will be like, yeah, Mojang why, sell why, out. Why do you like Minecraft so much? Yeah, I, I bet Notch gave him $5,000 to say that. 
Anyway, so this is a big problem. This is just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. uh, original article here on Forbes. We're getting more and more of our gaming news from Forbes. We were even talking about this a little while ago, where I was like, what is Forbes doing and video like, card reviews? I know. And now it's like, okay, this and is like, a good article. It, in this article, he goes like, yeah, I think games are fine at 30 FPS. And I'm just like, yeah, why, is For why does Forbes even have news? <laughs> Well, I thought other than that, the article is right, right here. But, uh, personally, I can tell the difference between 1080p and 70, 720p, as well as 30 FPS and 60 FPS, but I don't really care. In the past, I've raised the ire of the internet by suggesting that 30 FPS was better for some games, an opinion that I stand by. Well, I don't care about you. Yeah, so anyway, the point is uh, blah, 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 resolution, gate, or whatever. Everyone wants to call everything something gate. gate. It's very goofy. Um, Merc. So, uh, anyway, Xbox marketing chief Harvey Eagle, and that should be your first clue, marketing chief. <laughs> if you had to market the Xbox, what would you do other than downplay resolution and graphical horsepower? Um, <clears throat> marketing chief didn't deny the spec differences, but argued that it is really hard to tell the difference. If you put third-party games side by side that are running at slightly different resolutions or frame rates, now, to be clear, um, 1080p and 792p, or even 900p and 792p, are not slightly different frame rates. Also, there are, are resolutions. Or res resolutions, rather. Also, there are other issues here. The fact that you're not running at a native resolution means that the image is not as crisp. It means that you have to interpolate, which is bad. It's terrible. Anyway, if you put the blah 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 side by side, unless you're using a screen that's more than 60 inches big. I defy you to really see the difference. I personally struggle to see the difference. <sighs> I had a debate about this with someone, and one of the points that I brought up was that we seem to be going backwards. And people are talking about how on PS2 they're playing games at 60 FPS. I'm like, yeah, that should be a standard now. That should We should not have to be having this debate at this point. It's funny because Android games are like, yeah, G3! Let's, let's run it at 1440p! <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. You know, you know what? You know how NVIDIA has talked so much about how, how their, their Tegra chips and That's mobile so gaming and the console experience and all, and all that with the mobile chips, and they're, they're making such a big deal out of that. I mean, you've got you to gotta imagine how aware a company like that is of the kind of crap that was going on with watchdogs and how frustrated they are by the fact that they rely on these partners to create great PC games. No wonder they want to just throw development resources at mobile. At the Android guys that are like, like you just said, yeah, 1440p. Where they're actually trying to push the envelope and where the technology is actually improving. I hate Android games though. They just all suck. Like, I, I was looking through... Okay, I haven't looked at, like, any of the actual ones on the store, so that might help me a little bit. Right. But I was looking through my Humble Bundle Android games, which I have a ton of the other day, because I was just bored and it's waiting somewhere. I was like, wow, I don't want to play any of these. I know. <laughs> like, at all. We, we, need, we need more developers to figure out a way to make Android games much more profitable. I mean, Square's done it. What do they charge? Fourteen ninety nine for their Final Fantasy remakes on Android? Mm. Like, like we've seen we've seen fifteen twenty dollar Android games before, but it's not until that becomes more commonplace yeah. and sales of games like that become more mainstream that we're gonna see developers really invest properly in the stuff that matters, like storyline. Like I had a lot of fun playing uh, Reaper. Did okay. you ever try it? No. It's great on Shield with a controller. It's okay. it's a total blast. It's kind of like a side scrolling level based fighting game. But there's, there's no depth to it at all. It's the kind of thing that you play in bed while you're drifting off to sleep, and then like the last fight, you, you die because you actually fell asleep. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's that kind of game. And until they cost more, we're just it, it's just the rules. You, you, until you pay for something, no one's going to make it, and the other yeah. way around. And um, one thing I find to be a problem, too, is there's a lot of people developing things that actually look like genuinely interesting games, and then you start playing it, and you're like, this shouldn't be on a... Boom. Don't you have a shield right now? I do. Yeah, okay. But, like, I'm talking more if I'm, like, waiting at a bus stop or something. Right. You know, it's funny. I have almost no games installed on my phone anymore. I used to have, like, I at too. least ten games installed on my phone at any given time. I didn't, like, But you play enough Fruit Ninja, and you get to the point where it's just not entertaining anymore. Yeah. 
For me, anyway. One of my problems right now is that I am using a Moto X. When I had my G2, I had a lot more games installed. The right. screen's a lot bigger. So right. So it felt like it's, it's so... Look at my thumbs. Yeah, I played like Jetpack can't. Joyride a lot more on when I back when I was using the iPad too. Jetpack Joyride was pretty alright. I and but the the problem for me is that for whatever reason my account didn't sync all my items and stuff. So I had like the gold cuddles and the gold like everything, and I had like every jetpack. So for me, whenever they were releasing updates, because I refused to pay for stuff like that. Yeah. So I had actually earned through coins every yeah. single item in the game. That's what I was working on too. I didn't pay for anything. And then. As they were rolling out new stuff, I would always have kind of new stuff to buy. So it was my can game, right? Yeah. And then my account didn't sync. I upgraded to iOS 7 and all my stuff was gone. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that again. I switched phones. I'm Never not going to. I, I, you take away my coin magnet, you might as well cut off my balls. So. <laughs> okay, GTX Titan 2. This was posted like at like 4.10 or something an hour ago. <laughs> Someone linked this to us, and I was just like, oh god, get it in the dock. Here is the rumor. An NVIDIA product going by the description of GM200A1 graphics processor has been spotted. In... This is kind of a new thing, hey? What? Couriers. Yeah. Seeing the uh, the documents, because they legally they have to say what's in a package in order to ship it somewhere. So the couriers that sit between NVIDIA's production facility for their engineering samples and their testing facility are apparently picking up on graphics card shipments so it's going to be called uh, so it's called gm200 a1 graphics processor um the a1 stepping signifies the pre-production status of the chip and it will be upgraded to an a2 step stepping before being pushed into mass production for the consumer market it is rumored to feature over 4,000 CUDA cores and a widened memory bus of 512 bits. I find that very hard to believe. Uh, NVIDIA has avoided at every turn going to 512 bit as often as they can, every time they can. They've gone as wide as 384 and seem to be okay with it. But it is much more expensive to put a wider memory bus on a chip. You have to do more contact points, you have to do more internal routing. The design is much more difficult. And if they don't have to do it, then they don't have to. And with DDR4 coming so soon, and a derivative of GDDR based on DDR4 presumably in the works, I don't know that they would need to widen the bus that much more. I mean, it's not like we're limited on the current generation Kepler products by the memory bus that much. Memory overclocking doesn't do a whole lot for performance. So we'll see anyway. So it's rumored to have a 512 bit bus given the size of the 28 nanometer process. This new GPU will be very, very large. That's another thing is Nvidia doesn't give up margin easily. So yeah. telling Nvidia, Hey, just for be, there's no there's no competition that has a faster card than you, but you should price this card at nine ninety nine just like the old Titan, and you should make the chip bigger. Like they're gonna be like, okay, why? Maybe we'll just do a black edition instead, <laughs> like they did, where yeah. it's the same chip and they can still sell it for the same price. So I don't know. I'll be interested to see how that how that how that shakes down. Ghost um, and I were kind of screwing around with the dock a little bit. I deleted. A lot of it, but apparently not all of it. We had four or five of that article, and we just titled it like GTX Titan 3, GTX Titan 4, GTX Titan 5. We just changed every single article to like GK310, GK410, GK510, 999, 999, 999, 999. So it's expected to launch... Uh... <laughs> In, uh, in the first, first half, half of 2015, 2015, which is probably a pretty safe bet. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, what I can say is that, uh, and I really, okay, to be clear, I do not think it's related to Titan 2. I mean, the fact that they're shipping A1 silicon allegedly between testing facilities means it's nowhere even close to hitting the market. But uh, I actually have a meeting with NVIDIA on Monday. I'll be flying down to San Fran, so there's been, it'll be interesting to find out what that's about. There's been a lot of rumor mill stuff going around about NVIDIA lately. They're so. being really cagey about this. So not only am I, am I um, like, they wouldn't even tell me what the meeting's about at all. They're just like, get on a plane. And I'm like, okay, you have a meeting. And I'm like okay, may I know what it's about? My wife has an ultrasound that day, and I'd rather not miss it. And they're like, I'm like, can you, can you brief me over the phone? They're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> can we do a different day? Yes. Oh. So it was, it was going to be on the Tuesday, and I moved it to the Monday. Oh. Uh, so I can go to the ultrasound on Tuesday. That works. But, uh, but anyway, they, they won't tell me what it's about 
at all, and everything they tell me is embargoed until a date that presumably is also embargoed. <laughs> so don't expect to hear anything about this from me other at than all. that I have a meeting with them and I don't know what it's about. Damn it. They didn't even respond to my question of like, what's it about? Just, just <laughs> That's nope. the best. That's definitely the best. I love NVIDIA. Well, I mean, my contact there has been at NVIDIA for like 10 or 12 years or something like that. So he knows what's up. At NVIDIA, you do not leak information. It's like Apple. Like, if it's something where he's allowed to tell me, he will. Like, he and I have a pretty good rapport. But if it's something where he can't, he's told not to tell anyone, nobody will know. And that will be how it is. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are like, they're, That's they're pretty, pretty crazy. At Apple, sometimes even the engineers don't really know what's going on. It's pretty insane. Or at least that's how it was when Jobs was around. All right, so this, this is a controversial topic. Uh, actually, speaking of controversial topics, why don't we go ahead and do our sponsor spots? Woo! So Dollar Shave Club. By now, I hope most of you understand what Dollar Shave, it, Shave Club is. So basically, I'm going to take a bit of a slightly different angle on it this time. Do you shave? Okay, so I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. Do you shave with razors? I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. If you shave with razors, how much do you pay per month? And how inconvenient is it to go to the store and buy them and all of that stuff? Okay, so I'm letting you guys figure all this out. If the answer was more than, here we go, I'm just going to load up Dollar Shave Club's site. I'm going to bring it up on my, there, there's Mike. Look how crazy he looks. I've, I saw him in an interview, and he looked a lot less deranged, and it, it made him less less frightening to me. But um, Is he was frightening in that commercial? With the, the, like the machete and everything? Yeah, but like he does it so poorly, he doesn't even cut the tape. I know, but he's like aggressive. I mean, just because, okay, would you, okay, so would you, just because I can't cut tape with a machete, you would let me swing it at you? It was a, no, it was a joke. You I didn't swing it at a person. I know it's a joke, and me calling him deranged is a joke, too. The point is that what's no joke is their prices. So if you're spending uh. more than $6 or 9 bucks a month for a pretty darn high-end razor, so anywhere from four blades to six blades, then you're kind of getting screwed because that includes shipping and handling to your door once a month so that you're never dragging an old broken piece of glass or a rusty nail across your face to get a nice clean shave and you don't have to go to the store and get them to unlock the cabinet and buy razors anymore. So guys, check it out. Oh, I went to the wrong thing. Dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus ensures that they will continue to sponsor us and sponsor the WAN show and allow us to keep bringing this great content to you otherwise you can of course just go and sign up for it on your own because screw you Linus haha -ha! I'm an ad block and I'm a not use your referral link but I like the idea of Dollar Shave Club and you know what I guess that's fine too also they have other supplies like their shave butter which goes on clear so you can see what you're doing and their one wipe Charlie's which I have promised to never demo live on this show because they're butt wipes <laughs> Also sponsoring today is lynda.com. So the great thing about lynda.com is actually just, I mean, who doesn't like lynda.com? You like lynda.com. Taryn loves lynda.com. You know how, you know what's funny is I'm usually the one who does the sponsor spots around here. Like I'm the one who goes and memorizes or in the case of the 5-4 thing last week, completely doesn't totally memorize. Totally non-memorized. Totally not memorized. <laughs> like, 100% inaccuracy. I'm the one who memorizes the talking points they you want us to precise. hit. I'm the one who looks into, you know, like, sort of, are these guys legit? Are they something like Audible, where it's really easy for us to endorse them because they've just got a great service? And and, and normally I'm the one who kind of has to do that stuff. Whereas with lynda.com, Taryn was like, ooh, 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 I want to do the fastest possibles with the lynda.com integrations. I love them. I've been using them for years. So lynda.com allows you to learn all kinds of cool skills. You can learn programming skills, you could learn Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, you could work on your DSLR skills, and it's just video tutorials by industry experts that allow you to learn at your own pace and just study at your computer and pick up new and interesting hobbies or even practical skills that you can use in work. So Taryn is a great example that I love to bring up because his Adobe experience has actually ultimately that he started gaining from lynda.com has ultimately turned into a full-time job for him and uh, in my mind hopefully hopefully a career because I think he does a great job of producing YouTube content and internet content and uh, that's 
the kind of power that something like lynda.com has. And what's good about it is if you go to lynda.com slash wancho, you can get a free seven day trial and check it out. And speaking of full-time jobs and stuff, I know tons of people on the forum and tons of people in the community in general are interested in jobs in computers, particularly programming. If you're thinking about going to programming and you're in high school, the, co the courses you're taking are probably not hard enough. Jump on Linda and start learning some actual languages. It'll help a lot. You'll have a huge leg up once you get to university and you'll be able to work on stuff in your own time, which is more interesting and will teach you more than your courses probably will be teaching you because your courses are probably out of date, but Linda is not going to be out of date. So there you go. Two strong endorsements around here for lynda.com from people who have legit used it to yep. do things that they legit have jobs doing right now. Yep. So there you go. Linda's kind of fantastic. Pretty I darn cool. recommend it. All right, and the, oh, the last thing that I should probably say, not related to our sponsors for this week, but actually 5-4 from last week, um, they weren't mad. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> so for those of you who weren't watching last week, 5-4 uh, Club Clothing, we had a sponsor thing for them, and I butchered it. I got the pricing wrong. I got. I think I got the. Uh, I think I got the uh, the uh, the offer code wrong. I got the value of the clothing that they send you wrong. I got the special offer for that day <laughs> wrong. Like I got everything wrong. But apparently, apparently, so many of you were like, "Oh yeah, this looks kind of cool," and signed up. That they're just like, "Yeah, no, it's cool, dude. Like, <laughs> it's fine." <laughs> at least you said like some words. I guess cool. All right. Sounds yeah. Good. At least at least you had like our logo at the bottom of the screen. And you wore a shirt. While just mm. spouting nonsense. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, so, so okay. So let's move on to this topic that actually hits pretty close to home for me. So LG's new wearable is a child tracker. Okay, one, it's butt ugly, and they need to get Ridiculous. smaller. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's absurd. You can't put that kind of thing Look on a child. Look how big it is on the girl's wrist, mainly. I know, this is ridiculous. This These is need to be barrettes. Or yeah. they need to be like they need to be something the kid feels cool wearing. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of thing that they need to be. They need to be. They need to have at least a two to three day battery life. I mean, we're talking if a child's missing but potentially being moved around very quickly, or there's something interfering with the signal. You need to have a few days to potentially get a lock on it. Um, so there's there's this technology needs to advance before it's actually that useful and before it's the kind of thing that I would buy. But as someone who has lost a cat, as someone who has a child and would worry about losing them. Has not lost child though. I have not lost him yet. Um, I would buy this and I would put it on my kids. I see a lot of people freaking Discuss. out over this and this is the kind of thing that I would go, no, this is not okay, blah, 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 normally. But it's a very obvious device. Your kid knows what it's freaking for. And look how old the kids are. In this. Okay, but I'm talking about giving them barrettes and stuff. So that's what I would buy. That's fine. I'm, my main point is look how old the kids are in this. Right. They're not targeting this at like 17 year olds. Well, yeah, no, that's ridiculous. That's that's what I'm saying. A lot of people in the thing are like, oh, you shouldn't be able to listen to your kid's conversation. I was like, the kid's like seven. Yeah, so the way it works is the kid can press a direct call button to contact a pre-configured number, and if the kid doesn't pick up an incoming call from the parent's number within 10 seconds, the device just puts the call through and then lets the parent listen to what's going on. And people who are upset about that, again, they don't seem to understand who this is targeted at. The There's nothing range. my six-year-old should be discussing that I can't hear. It gets different once we're talking, you know, 9, 10, pre-adolescent type age where yeah. they, where they have privacy. But if they're at the age where they're still, you're still, you know, sitting, supervising them, bathing in the tub with all of their siblings, I, I mean, they're... <laughs> What's, and like, it, it, ugh, I don't know. And like the tracking thing, yeah. Maybe at a certain age they need to be able to kind of just take off. Not at six. Yeah, not at that age. They they shouldn't be on their own. And I mean, it, this is the kind of thing that 100% I would buy. Someone's like, oh my god, what if the kid is asleep? Have you ever heard of a baby monitor? It's like so much more intrusive than a baby monitor. I mean, so much less intrusive than a baby monitor. What do you Well, yes and no, because it's like strapped to the kid. Yeah, but the, the baby monitor has a camera on it. Not always. I have just an audio baby, baby monitor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mine's actually awesome. I, I don't know. A stupid one I don't before, even want but... a baby, so I don't know. <laughs> I actually, um, oh, I forget what it's called. I think it's called like the Mimo or something. Baby. I, I don't know. I fully understand and would be agree with and totally be on the side of the people that are freaking out if it was targeted in a very stealthy manner at an older age group. But it's a oh, very that's... 
a totally different totally thing. different conversation that's this like is a very the, young that's age like group. the boyfriend tracker that's app that got pulled I mean. off the google play store totally like, that's not, not okay cool. with that not okay with boyfriend tracker not okay with girlfriend tracker not okay with like my son is 17 years old tracker all that stuff is stupid but when it's like a six-year-old kid or this item, this is cool yeah. so this is uh this is the memo i actually pre-ordered this and basically what it is is this their marketing is just 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 horrendous though i'm sorry i'm going to interject for a quick second we were talking about Text messages oh, for from crying out loud. Five hundred dollar prepaid cards to take a quick survey. About your call with a Telus customer service rep. Unbelievable. I haven't even had one. Ugh. Like this is ridiculous. I haven't had a call with them in forever. Tell uh Telus, my ISP just randomly sent me a text message. We were talking about how that's bull crap. And I've been saying about how I get them all the time now. His ISP and his phone provider. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Both. Um anyway, so you are a great parent for buying our product. I hate this kind of crap. But it it, it it is actually really cool. So it lets you monitor their their breathing, temperature, um, stuff like that, and it's just a it's just a onesie that they wear. Yeah, we saw this at um, CES, right? And it had what, I think so. what was it, Galileo or something? I don't I don't remember. It was one of the Intel little microchips in it, which is pretty cool. So uh, I I plan to do like a, a review of it or something when the new cool. baby lands. That's and cool. I should follow up on my order because the baby's coming soon, and I remember doing the math, and it was supposed to arrive in time. So I love um, when you check your smartwatch because you do it so officially. Oh, well, the, the issue is that, okay, here, this is my one complaint about the Pebble Steel, is that it tends to sit here on my wrist with this buckle in the middle, and it, like, not in the middle. off to the side, even though I've shortened this side as much as I possibly can. So I often have to kind of give it a, oh, give so her a bit of a it. shake. That so the, the whip does two things, because that illuminates the backlight on the yep, Pebble, yep. and it puts it in a better position for me to read it. That makes sense. It just looks so official every time. And the reason I look at my watch so often is because I don't just want to know what time it is. I also check to find out what the date and month is, because I often forget these things. We were having a conversation the other day. When you work so much, sometimes you just focus too much on the thing at hand, and you have no short-term memory anymore. <laughs> What was that video I just filmed? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, one of the uh, one of the NCIX higher ups uh, came into the studio today when we were filming, and he was like, "Linus, what do you think of the Lenovo X1 Carbon?" And I'm like, "I don't know." What is it? And he's like, "Well, you did a video of it." I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> Did I? Oh, if you see the video, then you'll remember and you'll be able to talk about it. But like, probably not. No, no, <laughs> no. I don't remember. A I'm thing that about way. It. I have to get triggers. I won't remember. But if someone's like, "Look, you did the video," I'll be like, "Oh yeah, here's a bunch of extra stuff I can say." But yeah, I don't know. All right, so let's play hot or not. And I am I'm putting a bit of a different spin on it than you might be expecting. Um, so hold on a second. What's that site called? Speaking of no memory, straw poll. Straw there we pole. go. Hot or not. And we are going to have three options. Hot, not, <laughs> slick. <laughs> okay. So here we go. But you guys apply? have to look at it first. Don't vote yet. Because <laughs> everyone's just going to vote for you. And I do legitimately want an answer here. Yes. The new Inwin S-Frame. So it's a limited edition for sale. Mind you, they said that stupid pipe one was limited edition. First it was limited edition. Then it's like limited edition of each color, and we're going to do a bunch of colors. And then now they just kind of still seem to be around. Anyway, I don't know how limited any of this stuff is, but limited edition up for sale. Basically, this is a new case construction concept that has a single piece of aluminum folded over and over again. So bent, 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 bent. Something that I personally have an appreciation for. So my TJ07, I love that it's a single unibody piece of aluminum for the top, front, and bottom. Um, although this one is a little out there looking for me. I prefer a more classical style design. So basically they, they fold it, fold it, fold it, and then add two slices of tempered glass. I love that. Glass needs to be a more prominent design material or like a more frequently used design material for computer cases versus acrylic because acrylic is poopy. And then there are carbon fiber areas for cable routing. This is a good view of it right here. Mm -hmm. So you can see how this piece is folded, 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 folded. The motherboard tray mounts right here. And then there's also a demo build here that was on display that you guys can check out with, uh, with liquid cooling. So here's what I want to know, Twitch. Hot or not? Here is the link, the official straw poll link. I'm just going to paste these a few times here so you guys can get your votes in. So what do you think? 
Uh, I'm watching votes come in. What do I think about the case? You're just watching your ego come in is what you're watching. Pretty much, actually. So what, what do I think about the case? Is that your question? Yeah. Um, Hot or not? I think it's very cool that it's a solid piece of aluminum. I think it's so very wait, hold cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So aluminum. cool would be not then. I think it's very something that's cool is hot. by definition not hot. I think, it very, I think it's very hot that it has a solid piece of aluminum. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Get awkward. Sorry, sorry. Um, I think it's very cool that it has a solid piece of aluminum. I really appreciate that they actually use glass. Um, what I don't like is that it's if you take the one piece of glass off, it's like a glorified test bench because of how open air it is. Right. Um, so it's a bit of a dust. The guy concern. that posted the thread brought up the idea that like you can't look at this like a performance box. Right. Look at it like an art installation. I don't, that's not his exact words, but that's yeah. essentially what he was saying. Um, and that's an interesting idea, but the thing is just going to, like, it's not going to be an art installation for that long because it's just going to be a dust town. And if I was going to have something really that I thought was beautiful and, 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 and artsy, I would probably go for a desk computer. I'd go for a nice tempered glass top desk computer with and it's, filtered it, intakes. And, yeah. It's pretty aggressive to be a fancy artsy do you know what I mean? And then my other issue is that there's nothing that really matches it. Yeah. So the tower looks like what it looks like. And then the only way to have something kind of similar looking, I mean, I guess you could go Corsair mechanical keyboard. The black and... Yeah, yeah. with a black aluminum backing. You could go, uh, you could go, I don't know, thermal take BMW mouse. Um, it's totally uncomfortable and way too heavy. But like if you wanted something that looked kind but of But this edgy, is very... The, the BMW must have circles cut into it. And That's stuff. true. This is very straight This is lined. very edgy. Almost, again, actually, the Corsair mouse. Yeah, you could go with like it's an M. The M65 or whatever. Which is a laser mouse, unfortunately. I'm, but it's I'm, more cut. I'm pushing them to do an optical, like, RGB mouse. That's what I'd like to see. Like a lower end sensor, optical sensor, but with high end features like RGB and all that kind of crap. All right. So most of you are saying, uh, although it's actually very close it between is. slick and hot. So most of you Which uh, have obviously agreed. obviously means that those go together. Yeah, uh, not, no. It means that those are bitter enemies because they're competing against each other. No, see, in a we're very grouping up race. in one and two. We're beating up on not. That's really not how voting works, actually. Um, so anyway, um, so most, most of you are, no, uh, so most of you are saying slick with the rest of you saying either hot or not. And about, it's about a two to one ratio between hot and not for the in-win case. One um, thing that's going to be a problem is it's going to be expensive. Yeah, it's going to be extremely expensive. It's going to be really expensive. The, the site that's estimated how expensive it's going to be is known for being totally not right, but it's still going to be really expensive. All right, so we've got a few more rapid-fire topics here. So there's a police dog that was trained to sniff out hard drives and memory cards. This was originally posted by Johners on the forum, and it's a Hexus article. I got kind of a kick out of this. So this is Thoreau. And uh, the idea is to find technological jag ga gadgets, gadgets, gadgets that could contain child pornography. So they want to find uh, child porn traffickers. Is there a specific smell to child pornography? No, but there's a specific types? smell apparently to these electronics, and I think that's pretty darn cool. You know, dogs continue to be amazing. Although I'm not stoked for, like, every single piece of electronics I have being individually searched through every single file when I go through the airport. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> desktop sales are apparently no longer in decline. This was bound to happen eventually because the desktop is not dead. And it's the just not mouse keyboard <laughs> monitor usage experience is not dead. It's just they're not getting as fast anymore. And what he just said. They are so much more reliable now than they used to be. I mean, yeah. it, it used to be you didn't even get solid state caps on a server grade motherboard. Yeah. You were still getting electrolytic caps. And look at how many successful first boots you have now compared to before. The huge, very important rule used to be make sure that you um, don't put the side panel yeah, on your computer. Bad you luck on. to screw in the side panel the and first now time you like, put it PC. Doesn't matter. Everything just doesn't work. work. Yeah. So anyway, uh, they're no longer declining, according to Gartner, and I believe there was one other analyst firm that was saying that uh, they aren't declining, although they didn't quite agree. About on exactly how much and all. How much it's not declining, but it's like a very, 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 very minor decline. Yeah. I mean, I, I, 
I hope that this is good news for the PC industry in general, not just for the the desktop PC, because I don't think it was going any, I never thought it was going anywhere anyway, but I, I hope this is good news for the health of the PC industry. Now, once things have leveled out and it's not this market share grab and race to zero, I hope we see more expensive products. And hold on a second. I'm not asking for gouging, but what I'm asking for is higher quality. Premier. Premier products. Yes, I'm. I'm asking for. I'm asking for companies to see the opportunity that someone like Apple has seen to deliver premium products that are just legitimately better than the other ones that are out there. I think the Blade 14 is a fantastic example of this. Um, I <laughs> funny, funny thing. As much as I appreciate you guys posting all over Razor's like Twitter and Facebook and everything, I don't legitimately need Razor to give me a Blade 14. It's fine. I would love to have one. But Razer's policy with systems is that they don't give out review units, and that's fine. Um, so it is what it is, and I'm, it's, I, I, don't, I don't need it that badly. If I did, I could probably save my pennies. It would be for quite a while, and I could probably buy one, but it's just outside of my price range, and that's okay. I have an excellent laptop that I'm very happy with, and I'll continue to use this until it dies which it might be dying. Since the water incident, I've been getting some blue screens, so... It yeah. works for now, though, and yeah, something can sit now. blue screening for a long time before it actually decides to die. Well, yeah, but I don't like losing work, because yeah. I do a lot of work on this laptop. Yeah, like auto-saving through Word? That shouldn't be that big. Yeah, it, but it's a pain in the butt, because like, you know how I manage my browser tabs, and sometimes it doesn't remember my session, and so... You know I what's mean, super annoying? Sorry to interject here, but in terms of remembering session, when you when you close your browser and then like something updates and forces a, a browser open, like Flash, it'll be like "Thank you for installing whatever," and then it, your 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 restore session is now that freaking page. Yeah. I hate oh that. my god! <laughs> Screw off! I've lost so many important things that way. Just like, damn it! I can't go into history for this because I opened it like four days ago. Oh my god. Yeah. You only keep a couple days of history? No, it's just like I don't remember exactly what it's called. Right. Like I don't I don't remember exactly what was important. I just right. remember there was important things and going through all that history would be ridiculous. All right, we've got a couple more rapid fire topics here. So Uber Hamburger has posted this VR room technology that you guys should probably check out the video for. It's pretty friggin' cool. This is definitely one of those things where it's like, yeah, version much higher than this. Yeah. <laughs> Needs to be a thing. Yeah. But they've got a great preview here at the very beginning where the guy's walking around in a room, like a projected room, so you can see the flickering that the camera's picking up, but it's it's 3D, so he's wearing 3D glasses, and then he's got tracking points on this device he's holding as well as the glasses that allow him to walk around the virtual room and, like, look under things and walk around things, sort of. I mean, if you walk into the, the, the wall. wall with the projection... Yeah on it then that, that's a problem but then but you can he's yeah he's seeing through the glasses so he can yeah. actually see if he's going to walk into the wall or not he's saying that it's so immersive that they've actually had problems with people coming into the room walking around in it for a few minutes and then not being able to figure out where the exit is so their system for this is that when you touch each of the walls the one with the exit door makes a noise so that you can go find the door because otherwise people just get completely disoriented. That's pretty cool. And uh, they're, they're completely immersed in it. That's cool. And then the last topic that I have today is there's a Watch Dogs mod. <laughs> that... I was worried you are going to go to this one. Oh, actually, I guess there's one. <laughs> Verizon claims Netflix oh. is the one causing internet congestion. Um, so this, apparently this is... they actually have like really solid data. Yeah. So where they're legitimately trying to make the ISPs look bad by choosing crappy routes. Yeah, uh, that's so not good. That's that's sort of terrible. Like Verizon sucks, but that's still not good. Yeah. So there you go. Too too hot for TV. You're, but, you're gonna uh, not want that to go. Yeah, the I know, whole I know, I know, I know. So so basically, there you go. That's uh, mm. that's Aiden Pierce with this particular Watch Dogs mod. That makes sense. And he paused it at the exact right second. <laughs> Good work. Yep, that was about to get a lot, a lot less uh, safe for work than it than it was right there. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Oh no, I have one more thing. So you guys still have a little bit more time, um, but I'm amazed at what the response has been to this. Uh, we have a campaign going on Teespring right now. 
to get your commemorative Highlander shirts. And 130 of you so far have, uh, have bought Highlander commemorative either American Apparel Crew neck shirts, uh, Gildan Heavy Blend hoodies, or Gildan Long Sleeves. So these are the three different options available. I'm personally maybe going to get a hoodie. I already have a shirt because I actually attended. So I already have this exact shirt. But uh, yeah, if you guys want one, check that out. Also, Tech Syndicate has their own commemorative Highlander shirts. So theirs are a little bit different. They're monochrome. And then they have the logos and the names of the YouTube channels on the back. And I think uh, I saw a tweet from Jimmy a little while ago. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with that but i think it's available soon if it isn't already yeah. so um it doesn't really matter who you buy it from the point is just i think they wanted some tweaks made to the design so they wanted to put some stuff on the back and then we wanted to offer not just t-shirts but a couple of different styles so we kind of did our own thing with it and you can buy whatever you think is cool and I, or not or just don't at all that's fine too also okay yeah also okay i'm gonna get one for like my whole family and probably buy a sweater for myself so that's me, but, you know. Oh, yeah, it's teespring.com slash HighlanderLan. Yeah, and if, if you just go to teespring.com, you can click search custom apparel, and if you type in Highlander, it just comes up. Cool. So that also works totally fine. Teespring's actually kind of cool. It's different. We normally use district lines, and the way Teespring works is you don't actually have to pre-buy your inventory like we do with district lines, where we pre-print shirts and then we put them on a shelf. Whereas with Teespring, you do campaigns like this, where it's like, okay, we need a goal of 150, and then our pricing from Teespring is based on achieving that goal, and then they print them all at once, and then ship them all at once, and it's just all one campaign. I'll tell you guys now, the margin is a lot lower for us. Um, like, these are costing multiple dollars more than the ones that we have on... Um, on district lines but it gives us a little bit more flexibility in certain ways like we can embed teespring links within our videos um i don't know like it's it, i don't know it's, it's just american different. imperial instead of next level uh, no american we're doing american apparel on district okay. line as well um so i don't know i it, it doesn't allow us to offer shirts on an ongoing basis as easily like on district lines it's really easy for us uh, to just yeah. keep when show stealth in stock because that one just consistently sells like one a day or two a day and people just like it. Um, whereas this is very campaign based. It's like, hey, we did this event. Here's a commemorative shirt. We're never going to print this again. I don't know. It's interesting. Can we just use both? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we don't why have an exclusivity both? deal with anyone. I'm just, I'm just talking about why we do the things the way we do them. Yeah. In case people who watch our show are interested in This could make sense for do. stuff like when we did Re Resolution as a Number. Yeah, and yeah. And different events like Highlander. I think Resolution as a Number has staying power. I think people will still think that's a funny shirt. Down the road? Or maybe not. I don't know. I always think I'm funny, though, so maybe I'm just, maybe I'm biased. <laughs> you didn't even make that joke. Which one? Resolution is just a number. I know. I just oh. think my shirt about it is funny. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I think we still have to do now with 30% more gen. <laughs> <laughs> if you make it look like a retro ad... Yeah, because yeah. that's legit a <coughs> joke. Anyway, I think we're done here. Gaming PCs. Um, I am going to do a garage sale today, so if you guys want to stick around, there's going to be potentially some cool stuff. I don't know what happened to it all, so I'll probably have to go get it. But uh, It probably got cleaned up. Yeah. Thanks Thanks for watching The Wine Show, guys. Peace out. See you next week. Yay, bye. That is... Oh, oh it's broken. Oh, no. There we go. Yay. We should just have an outro one. Um, yeah, but then I use up a scene. I only have 12 scenes. Next split. They should have more scenes. I don't know. Now with 30% more scenes. They should do that. Excellent. Thanks again to our sponsors, Linda.com and Dollar Shave Club. I use both of them.